Hi there. I'm Christine Dunbar from speechmodification.com, and this is my smart American accent training. Welcome to our Friday live question and answer class. So nice to see so many of you here already today. I'm looking forward to answering your questions about American English pronunciation, American accent, whatever will help you improve your overall communication in American English. Feel free to ask your questions at any time in the chat, and I'll go through and get to as many of them as I can today. I see, um, I saw before the class started that we had a request for the word premiere. So I want to start with that word. Um, premiere has second syllable stress. And what's challenging here is we have multiple R's in this word. Also, uh, it looks like the first syllable should sound like pre, premiere. And really in connected speech, this syllable is unstressed. And so it's gonna, instead of having an E sound, it's gonna have an uh sound. In the dictionary, it'll look like this. Pra with vowel schwa sounds like pra. And then you'll see the line for the stress and then the mere syllable is stressed. Uh, so I'm gonna rewrite this syllable mere just as um, this kind of mere. It's really the same as if I were saying it's a mere chance or mere coincidence. That doesn't make it easy to say ear. <laughs> um, so building from, it has the ear diphthong. So you have a tense E sound gliding into your American R, ear. I would build from there. So trying ear, mere, premiere. Anytime we have second syllable stress, it can be helpful to just say the stress syllable and then tack on your first syllable really briefly and shortly. Like you could even say mirror, a mirror, the mirror. That's going to help you get the rhythm. Then move to premiere. Mirror, premiere. Uh, thank you for that request. I saw um, that viewer had requested the word and I suggested coming to the live class, so I'm glad you were able to make it. If you have a request in our Word of the Day series, I am working my way through all of those requests, um, but I'd be happy to cover them live here on Fridays or on Sundays for our channel members so that you don't have to wait so long because now we have so many great requests coming in. I'm working my way through that list. Okay, we have some other um, questions in the comments. Um, so we have a request about the word comfortable. Um, and this viewer is saying that Google said it was like come for trouble. Um, but I don't hear that. Um, so I do have a video for comfortable after class. I'll go through and in the comments, I'll do timestamps for all of the different things I talk about today. And there I will put links for the additional videos that will walk you through a little bit more. But I think um, Data, uh, Dana is correct when she's saying that we often with the word comfortable, um, we don't really say comfortable, four syllables. We often will change it to more like comfra, comfra, bull, comfra. Um, no R there. Comf, tra. So syllable one, comf, tra, bull, syllable three, comfortable. Or we say comfortable. So this or becomes more an er. So we people do say comfortable, comfortable. This sounds more like a D. Or I think easier and more common, comfortable. We kind of take the furda syllables and change it more to um tra, comfra, comfra. Um, again, I walk through both options for comfortable in my video for it, and it'll walk you through in a little bit more detail so that you can see it broken out and written out. Um, but I hope that helps you get that gist of um, the way people say it doesn't always actually match what you see in the dictionary or what you see or hear um, for Google Translate or looking it up on Google. Google is actually fairly reliable, and one of the features they do have is that for certain words, you can click on practice, and you can say it, and it'll give you feedback on what you're saying. And it's one of the few sources where I think that that is somewhat reliable. It's a little more accurate than some of the other apps and things that are out there. Um, so I've checked that a few times. Of course, I can't um, endorse it entirely because uh, voice recognition is not always going to be 100% accurate, but that is one um, 
fairly, fairly good one. So thank you for that request. Nice to see those of you who are regulars. Welcome to anybody who is new. Um, Mama Dave wants to know about quail, quill, and quilt. So first, quail, let's write them all out. Quill, quilt. All of these have the letters Q, U, say the sounds K and W, Qu, Qu. If that's challenging for you, try just doing your W sound, W, and then add the K, Qu, Qu. Um, for quail, we have the A diphthong, um, Qua, and then a dark L, which will have a little bit of a schwa in front of, uh, before it. So thinking about it like quail, quail, even though it is a one syllable word, quail, if you break it down into quail and get that linking between the A and the O, that can help you. Then with quill, it's um, the qu sound with an I vowel, quill. Um, that one doesn't really have as much length. So quail, you're gonna be long because of that diphthong A. And then quill is more direct right to the L. And quilt is just like quill, but we add the T sound, quilt. So you might say it with a pronounced T, or you might also hear quilt, quilt. Um, if we do a stopped T there, we just go really short on the L um, and cut off the air to mark that T sound. Um, we'll do the same thing with linking the T's that we would normally do. Um, yeah, thank you, that was a good request. And let's see what else we have today. Uh, a request for theory, theor theoretical, and wrap up. Okay, so for theory, again, this is a word that we tend to reduce, um, and we don't necessarily do theory. You can do three syllables here, but most Americans will say it like theory, theory, where they'll just um, make an ear diphthong, then they'll add the th. Ear, fear, theory, theory. Um, so the challenge here is gliding between the TH and the R. Um, you might want to start building from the R, like ear, eerie, theory. Even when I am doing the TH sound, my tongue is already back and ready for the R sound. Typically, in any word where there's an R, the TH is going to. Um, Siri just thought I was talking to Siri when I was saying theory. Um, <laughs> my device lit up. Um, anytime there's an R, it's going to control the word more. And if I start with the TH and I don't have my tongue ready for R, theory, then I'm going to end up with kind of some extra sounds and maybe my R and TH won't be as clear. I do have a video for TH and R words working together, and I cover that in my Sounds of English course on speechmodification.com. You might find that useful. Typically, working on TH words separately, R words separately, and then putting them together is going to help you. When it comes to theoretical, theoretical, let me just check the spelling. Um, count on your um, advice on the spelling. Um, so theoretical, uh, we have stress on the ret syllable, theoretical. Um, so there's a red tent vowel there, theoretical. This T becomes more like a D, it's a flap um, because it's between the two vowels and it's not followed by a stress syllable. And then we have a dark L here. So we're gonna go almost right from the K to the L, cull radical, and then the same beginning, the, the, uh, in this case, the, I'm going to use it more as a schwa, theoretical, four syllables, theoretical. And then for wrap up, wrap up, um, we have the W is silent, the A is a black t cat vowel, wrap is like cat, um, and then up is a schwa, wrap up. Wrap it up, wrap up. Um, yeah, I'm not sure what's challenging you there. Maybe just the R sounds or knowing what um, vowel to say for that letter A. Um, let me know if I didn't clear that up for you. Um, and I can come back to your request. Um, okay. 
Tashi would like to know about the word struggling. Um, yes, I can see why you might be struggling with that word. So here's another example that seems to be the theme today. I can say struggling, struggling with three syllables. When I just say struggle, um, we have a dark L there, so struggle. We have the, this letter U says the stressed schwa. Um, you might start with just building from the middle of the word, like rug, rug and then maybe rug, trug, strug, strug. That str blend might be challenging too. Struggling, and then you can do struggling, three syllables. You can also do struggling, struggling, in which case you're gonna sound, it's gonna sound more like saying the stra part and then a gl blend, gling, struggling. Um, if it's easier to say struggling, I'm struggling, that's okay. Or you can reduce it down to I'm struggling, she's struggling. Um, finding out where, what gives you the challenge, is it the R, is it the, the closeness of the R and the L, or putting that GL like gling together. Um, you might also have just wanted to know because you probably hear it two different ways when you're listening to that, um, and both are acceptable. Um, okay. Hi, Dana. Um, Dana is saying she recently became aware of people saying fifth, fifths, twelfth, like fifth, fifth, fifths, twelfth, where certain consonants disappear. Yes. So um, typically what I recommend here is in a word like fifth, we have the F and TH together. So ideally, you can put the whole thing in, fifth, but you'll hear that often that F will drop off and people will just say the fifth, the fifth time, the fifth of the month. Um, Cinco de Mayo is on the fifth. Um, and it's really almost impossible to hear if I'm doing fifth or fifth. I mean, you can hear it, but you can easily get away with just doing the TH there on that one. I would say on the fifth, um, doing it with just an F at the end is more noticeable. To me, that one sounds like an error. Um, because if the TH is dropped off, then I don't hear that um, quality of that it's an ordinal number. Um, so I would say if one's going to drop, you should drop the F um, and do it this way. Don't drop the TH. In 12th, 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 12th. I would say the same thing goes for 12th. Um, building up, you can... Um, <laughs> If I'm going to build these words, I would do fifth, fifth to build it. But I, if I could only put one in, I would say fifth. And I think um, many, many native speakers just use fifth instead of fifth. Um, yeah. Okay. Yes, I've definitely noticed that. And thank you for that comment and observation. It's um, a challenging combination of sounds. And I think it's natural uh, to reduce it somewhat. Um, Great, um, thank you for that request. Um, we have a request about um, can, can't, and and. Um, so for these words, I do have a video talking about the differences between can and can't, um, which I would recommend looking at. But because you're asking about the vowel in these words, I'm just gonna focus on that for now um, and let you know what's happening there. So basically, this is the same vowel we have in words like cat um, and black, but when you're saying it in a word like cat, um, it's easier to stay open in that a ah position, the most open forward vowel, cat, black. When you're, you're saying something like can, can, because the N is coming, it's lifted and nasalized, the vowel might be a little more closed. So I'm not gonna go all the way to an eh, like can't, but when I can't, there is some nasalization there on that vowel. My markers are all drying up on me. Um, and so, and also with and, um, that it's not gonna be quite as open as in other contexts. Can't is typically the one that's going to make make always stay this a vowel. 
for both can and and, the other thing that you might be noticing is that we um, reduce those. So if I'm saying I can go, um, I can have it, you can, you can do it, you can hear how I'm almost doing no vowel there at all. Um, so instead of you can do it, I'm saying it more like you can, you can. So I'm going from the k sound to the n sound. There might be a little schwa or a little e eh in there. It's a very reduced vowel. My mouth is not gonna be as open. The most important thing is to be very lax and short on that one. Same thing with and. If I'm saying um, you can go and you can listen, I'm stressing the word and, then I'll use this clear a. Eh. But if I say um, I'm gonna do some laundry and I'm gonna, and I'm gonna, and I'm, we reduce it, we often leave that D off, and it sounds a little more like N, N, or just the letter N. You, you, and, you and her, you and, you and her. So that's one of the common words that gets reduced. The vowel also gets reduced, and then also the context of having the N after the A changes how that vowel sounds. So there's kind of a lot going on with those pretty simple words, um, but your ear is, telling you correctly that they're somewhat different than um, some other a ah, vowels, letter A. Thank you for that request. Um, so here's another word with letter A, the word master. This one is gonna have a much clearer a ah sound. Um, and yeah, fairly straightforward, first syllable stress. I would just break it up like master, master. Um, and then you just wanna make sure you have a tense um, er sound at the end, master. Um, thank you. Um, request for the word very. So this very and this very are the same. This is the one we use the most, um, very much. It has the air diphthong. So building from air, then put your V on, there, and lastly a tense E sound, very, very. Um, you also can try just airy. Um, to get that air sound. Just make sure your air is held longer, has that tense A sound. And watch out that your letter Y, you wanna make sure you go back to a tense E sound. I often hear it more as vera or vere in some non-native speakers because it's harder for them to do that tense E at the end of the word. Um, I do think I have a video for very, um, in which case if I do, I'll um, put the link for that in the comments after class so you can go back and get some more details and help for your word. Um, we have a question, is it true for Americans when one word ends in the sound N and the next begins with a P, B, W, or M sound, then the N from the word changes to an M like Green Park. Um, so the question was, I'm going to the green park, um, or what were some of the other, so um, ending with a W, a B, um, so um, in, um, in water, in water, in water. Uh, no, I don't think that's true. I don't think those N's change to M's, green, green park, green, that, because the W, the P, those are both lips are closed. It may have a little bit of that sound when you're listening in water, in the park, in green park, green park. I'm closing to the N and my lips are getting ready for the P. So when I, I if I'm making a break, green park, there's no M sound at all. Green park, green park. I'm still making the N with my teeth but maybe if people's lips are closing for the P or the W or the M, we hear something a little more M-like because M mm is closed and it's a nasal. Um, I think that's not a rule though or not a real pattern to change to that M sound and I wouldn't try doing it. You just might notice that um, anytime the context is there, it can affect a little bit how it sounds, but it would be strange to say green water instead of green water. Um, I can hear the difference there, I, so I wouldn't like use that as a technique um, in terms of pronouncing English. Um, that's an interesting um, information. Thanks for sharing that. Um, we have a request for the word theater. Um, so I spelled it the American way, you spelled it the British way is more spelled with R-E at the end. The American way we spell it this way. 
Um, and there's going to be a different pronunciation in British English than American English. We do it as three syllables, theater, theater. This T becomes more of a flap. So it sounds kind of like the uh, with first syllable stress, theater, theater. Um, yeah. And um, uh, the a follow up on wrap up. Um, um, yes, there's no, even though it's spelled with a W, the W is silent in rap. Um, good question. So um, request for words, education, pronunciation, communicative, and evaluation. Um, so for education, I'm covering that, or I recently covered that in Word of the Day. Um, let's go over it briefly education. And then as I have said to some others, I'll put links for any more detailed videos on your words in the comments after class. So you can go back and get a little bit more help. Um, education has the A syllable is stressed. So in these A-T-I-O-N words, we typically stress that second to last syllable. Um, edja, edja, we have the E eh sound, this D-U is more of a J, a J sound. So you could think about it like this word edge, edge education, edge. Um, we have a little bit edge, we a little bit of a y there with an U, edge education. So you can either do it as a U or a Y, edge. Then we have the K and the shun syllable, almost no vowel in that list, last syllable. Um, Pronunciation, I do have a video for that as well, thinking about it as pra, nun, si, a, shun, pronunciation. Um, what I often hear the mistake there is I'll hear pronunciation because we do say pronounce, but then when it comes to pronunciation, it changes to a schwa. The spelling is different as well. Pronounce, we have this spelled this way pronounce, but pronunciation, we lose that, that O, um, not the U, we lose the O. Um, good. And then you also wanted to know about um, communicative and evaluation. So for communicative, um, a lot of syllables there, communicative. I'm noticing a trend in your words that it may be this y sound um, that's giving you trouble. So um, where there's a glide for the ooze and, or not. Um, in communicative, we have, this is where that happens. It's like communicative. Um, and it also has stress on that syllable. So communicative has second syllable stress. So it sounds like ka, mun, ni, ka, tiv, communicative. Um, that's an i sound, communicative. Um, yeah, hopefully seeing it written out that way helps you um, break that down. And then you also wanted to know, know about evaluation. Again, eval, Uation. Here's where my trouble might lie. It's a there's a U there, so I'll write this one with IPA. We have a. Uh, the E says schwa. Uh, stresses on the vowel syllable, a vowel, and then we have a glide here. A vowel U. A. Shun. So I would rewrite that as a uh, vowel. U. Um, actually, secondary stress on vowel and main stress on a. Evaluation. Evaluation. Um, yeah, so I do have um, a lesson on speechmodification.com and in my um, online courses on speechmodification.com. So a free lesson as well as um, some in the online courses that talk about when U says oo, and when it says you, like in solution, it says oo, but education, education, there's the ya sound. Um, so because of those words that you're asking about, I think that that's something that would be useful for you to 
learn more about when it says ooh and when it says you. I also have a video as part of the word of the day list where I talk about new um, words that have the ooh versus you, new versus few, for example, um, in that even though those are both spelled the same, in a word like new, it's just an oo. In the dictionary, it'll look like this. But in few, it has that glide, and it sounds like a u, few. And in the dictionary, that one would look like this. So you're looking for whether or not there's the y glide in there. The confusion can be also be partly because of spelling, right? So some words do and don't have that oo, um, depending on, they're also spelled with letter U, like solution. The additional confusion is that some British speakers will say new, so they use this y glide differently than American English. So you may have learned it one way or another. You can look, um, what I like, uh, one dictionary I like is the um, Oxford Learner's Dictionary because uh, it shows both the British and the American English. So you can find that by searching on OxfordLearnersDictionary.com or if you're on my website, speechmodification.com, go to the free practice area and use the search tool. First of all, you can look up your word or your pattern or your phrase. You'll see a lot of resources and videos there. But what I'll show you is you can also find um, my information about using the dictionary. If you just click in the search box and click dictionary, it's going to show you all the lessons where I talk about dictionaries. And this one, it'll show you the links to two different dictionaries I like. So here's that Oxford Learner's Dictionary. Um, and then so for example, let's just look up um, one of the words that you had asked about. Oh, well, we'll look up um, new uh, because that's a good example. So in there it'll show me the blue is the British English and it shows the new. Um, if I had the sound on, you would hear it saying new as well. And then the pink is the North American English. That's what that stands for. And you can see it's just new there. Um, so that's uh, um, what I would say is probably the connecting theme between your words. Great. Okay. Um, we have about 10 minutes left, so it looks like I may not be able to get to everyone's requests today. I'll work through as many as I can. Um, I'll be back again on Sunday. We'll have our members only class, and if you join as a channel member, you can come to that. It's a much smaller group. I ask answer members' questions live in that class, as well as they can put their requests in at any time, and I cover them once a week, so you can watch the replay and get the answers to your questions. Um, so it's one way that I'm trying to get more responses to you, to more of you who are asking um, for help and um, at a low price. So you can join the channel as a basic member and get that perk. Um, after class, if you'd like, click on the join button and you can see um, how that all works. Okay, so going back to questions. Um, we had a request about infrastructure. Um, structure and infrastructural. Um, I haven't heard that word infrastructural before, but I'm assuming that's how you would say it. So I did recently cover infrastructure in Word of the Day. Um, let's just go over it briefly. So building from structure, structure, um, rewriting this as, um, this is a vowel schwa, so thinking about that as a, uh, and then build from the First R sound, r, tra, stra, struck. We put a K there, but in structure, we don't really release it. So I go up to the K, structure, and I release it right into the CH sound. And then I have my R sound. So first syllable stress, structure. Then when we add infra, we just add an in and another schwa here, fra, infra, infrastructure. First syllable stress with secondary stress on the struck infrastructure. And then if we're going all the way to infrastructural, infra infrastructural, go back to main stress on struck, structure, oh, and then you have to add a dark L there. So that would be pretty challenging because of the R's and L's. Um, you can hear more, I can walk, 
I walk more slowly through the pronunciation of infrastructure in my word of the day video for that. So check back um, after class in the comments for a timestamp with a link to that video for infrastructural or for infrastructure. Um, thank you. Mama Dave is asking about the word mo that rhymes with the word o. So just thinking about that American o diphthong and then put your m on. It'll look like this in the dictionary. Um, yeah, so it sounds like an o even though it's an ow. So it doesn't rhyme with now. It rhymes with o, mo and o. Um, that was a quick one to handle. Okay, a couple more and then we need to wrap up for today. Um, uh, we have a question about how to stop translating um, in, into your native language in your head, um, thinking in English and speaking more quickly and more fluently. Yes, uh, it's definitely something where um, if you work at it, you can begin to do more, um, less translating and more thinking in English. Um, it, it depends on your language level generally, but the more you practice that and the more you work on thinking in English in sentences in your head, it can be really helpful. You can also work on just talking aloud and start with some simple things like describing what you see, describing what you're doing, then trying to verbalize thoughts aloud in English, then trying to just think them in English. We all think in a mix of language and just concepts and pictures and ideas. So just getting more verbal in your head um, using full sentences um, can be helpful. Also, I would say just listening and surrounding yourself with a lot of listening in English um, and let go of having to understand everything you hear. Just try to think and be responsive at whatever level of um, your English level is at um, and be patient that it's a, it's a slow process. I do have some videos about thinking in English to build fluency. Um, and if you've seen those, um, they may be helpful. And if you haven't, I can put them in the comments after class and you can check those out as well. Okay, we have a request um, from Dana, one of our channel members. She wants to know about the word unboxing. Um, so she wants it's back to that question about um, if a word has an N and then a B, would you say unboxing rather than unboxing, un unboxing? Um, no, I don't think so. I think it's the same thing where maybe listening to it because I'm doing un unboxing, 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 my lips are closing for the B. Um, yeah, I don't know. When I said unboxing, did it sound like I was using kind of an M sound there? Um, you can be the judge of that. I think I hear the distinction between the two. It might be just hard to hear those differences um, because an, n and m are both nasals and the n followed by lips closed is gonna have some uh, qualities of the m sound. Um, yes, okay. Um, question for the word cafe. Um, so that has second syllable stress, and you might even see it sometimes written with the stress on the E. In American English, it's going to be the A diphthong, so building from the back, fe, cafe. This is the black cat vowel. Um, so in the IPA, you're going to see it like cafe. Um, so just holding that A longer and being shorter and lighter on the calf syllable. And while you're at the cafe, the, the other request was for the word croissant. Um, and you're gonna hear a variety of different pronunciations for this in American English. Most standard for American English is gonna be croissant, um, which is gonna have a schwa, croissant, ah, and an ah here, croissant, with second syllable stress, croissant. Um, you will hear some trying to do a little more French, like croissant. <laughs> um, part, I'm laughing at my own um, not great French accent there. Um, and you, again, people don't always know exactly how to say it. They may not be comfortable using more of a French pronunciation. Um, so kind of the safe, neutral American way is second syllable stress. Ah, vowel here, sant, croissant. 
um, yeah. Um, and, you know, know your audience too, right? If you're at the cafe and you're ordering a croissant um, and it's a native French speaker who runs the French bakery, you can do your best with croissant <laughs> um, or you can go more kind of neutral American croissant on that word. Um, thanks for that request. I do think I have that in my list uh, to make in a future word of the day class because it's been requested by other others as well. Um, okay, let me see what else I have missed along the way. I know I skipped a couple. I'm gonna try to get to everyone as much as I can before we wrap up in a couple minutes. Um, all right, we have a request uh, about how to pronounce words with STS, like tourists or ghosts. Um, I think I actually have a video about this as well. Let's take your word ghosts. Um, so it does sound like tss at the end, right? The best way to build up to that is try just saying the first part. So try ghosts and then add your T, ghost, and then finally ghosts. You can also just try these sounds by themselves. So st, st. Basically the S sound continues, the T stops, and the T and then the S sound continues again. St, st. Um, you can also build from the back. S, and then t. So that's just a little noisy T sound leading to the S. T, st. And then finally st, st. <laughs> um, Yeah, or osts ghosts. Um, not simple, but when you get used to the difference between the S and the T, it's kind of similar tongue position, just stopping the air or releasing the air and letting it flow. Um, thank you for that request. I hope that helps you. Um, go slow and be patient and try those different techniques to approach it, um, either from building it sound by sound, working from the back, or just doing those um, voiceless sounds by themselves. Um, Okay, um, we have a question about the meaning of the word so, all the meanings of the word so. Um, I'm going to leave that for now since it's less pronunciation based. Um, I would say looking, um, learning to look up words in the dictionary, let's just model that. Um, again, finding a good dictionary that you like. One that has a lot of examples is gonna be useful. This Oxford Learners is a pretty good one. Often looking for a learner's dictionary, they're gonna give you more information than just a regular dictionary. So this one says, so to such a great, de great degree, look at all these different examples, lots of sentences that helps you learn it. Um, and then also, um, so as to do something, um, so kind as, Okay, then it says very or extremely, another meaning. Another meaning, not so as, used for comparison, so it shows you how to use it. Um, used to show the size, amount, or number of something, example sentences. Used to refer back to something that was already mentioned. So, as I was saying, um, also means also. To agree that something is true, especially when you're surprised. <laughs> Tons of meanings, right? One simple little two-letter word. Informal, uses a negative. Um, use it when you're showing somebody something, and then here's a bunch of list of idioms where we use it, where it's used. So get, getting familiar and comfortable with the dictionary. There's so much more in there besides basic meanings and just pronunciation. Again, that's oxfordslearnersdictionaries.com, or you can f find it, link to it from my website, speechmodification.com. Um, okay, uh, Maria's following up. She was expecting to hear a stop T in the croissant. Um, yes, sorry, I should have specified that. So if I'm saying a word with a T by itself, croissant, I might let that T release. If I'm saying it in a sentence um, or at the end, often I will do a stop T there. So rather than croissant, I would say croissant. Yeah, I'd like to have a croissant, please. Um, uh, I enjoy having a croissant every morning. Um, the croissant is, the croissant is, um, maybe if I'm linking, I'll use that tea. The croissant is really good. Um, they're croissants. 
are really good. The tea will be there if I'm making it plural as well. Um, but you're right, I neglected to mention that um, we often, when a word ends with T, we use that stop T rather than pronouncing it clearly. All right, I apologize for not getting to everyone's questions today. I'm out of time. I have to see a client now, so I need to wrap up. But it's wonderful to see so many of you here. I'll be back again next Friday, so come back and ask those questions. And I'll go through after class um, later today and read the comments that I didn't get to. If I have answers or information for you, I'll put some links there in that comment. And as I mentioned before, um, those of you who are channel members will be back again Sunday with our question and answer class. And I'll cover all of the requests that came in from channel members throughout the week so they don't have to week, uh, wait so long for their answers. Wonderful to see everyone so much. Uh, so grateful to have you here with me today and every Friday. I really enjoy doing these classes with you. I'm Christine Dunbar from speechmodification.com. Remember, if you want to sound like a native speaker, you can do it. Speechmodification.com. Bye, everyone. Hope to see you again soon.